All right, all, and welcome back to a new video previewing day three of the Punch Sound Festival for 2021. We're here. It's after the uh, second last race. It's 20 past seven here on Wednesday evening, and we'll be looking forward to Thursday's card. And what looked like a fairly mediocre middling day yet again has just been transformed by the Enigma Foxy Jacks. 33 to one winner. Uh, for Mouse Morris and Johnny Moore was just hoping that a step back down to two and a half miles might see this horse to good effect. He's been running over three miles, not seemingly getting home, and he's gone and done so. Add that to a few nice price uh, places. O'Toole placed at 33 to 1, ran a stormer in the champion bumper. Kilcrook, very impressive, obviously. An album photo uh, ran a big race, but he's just his jumping does let him down at times. And it did again when getting beaten by Clan Day's Oboe. Galloping Deschamps, Day very impressive. Fortune Street, another place for ourselves alongside Gentleman's Game. So overall, a good day, but mostly just because of that one winner. We're, we've got two left in the in the last. Manasanda was has been well backed. Uh, she was 16 to 1, I believe, last night. I think she's into around 5, 6 to 1. Let's hope she runs well, maybe collects a bit of prize money for Lorna Fowler. But we'll move on to tomorrow's action again, equally tricky. And to be honest, just landing one of those winners has sort of saved the week for me because it was going fairly dreadfully up until that point as people who backed or have been kind of looking at my uh, selections over the last two days will know firsthand but starting off to 340 a little competitive handicap hurdle here but an each way nap here so an each way nap is a one point nap so rather than a 0.5 each way uh, this is a one point nap uh, of the day and it is on a horse called five helmets uh, for Gavin Cromwell and Jonathan Moore, uh, he's six to one best price over mark of 121. I think he takes an awful lot of stopping in this. I've backed him the last twice, and he's won the last twice. He's improving with his jumping. He seems to like a bit of better ground. Was rated 80 on the flat at his best, and I think there's still another win to come from him over her. So I'm hoping he might do the business. And at six to one, I think he's a reasonable enough price. The 415 tricky two mile handicap chase two horses. I wouldn't say they're cliff horses, but they're horses I have backed in the past. One of them being Aramax, who I'm going to play again for Luke Dempsey and Denise Foster, 14 to 1. Totally shaped okay at Fairy House. Still needs a little bit of work on his jumping and you do often wonder with a horse like this whether a long term target over a little bit further is in the pipeline but he showed enough at Ferry House to lure me in here and at 14 to 1 I'm going to play him each way alongside resident Blair White favourite I know a few people have been a little bit disappointed I didn't back him at the Dublin Racing Festival and at Cheltenham but he ran good races Capucha Mix I'm back on the train at 20 to 1 He's dropped to a mark 131 and he hasn't run badly the last twice in the big two mile handicap at the DRF and in the Grand Annual when finishing seventh. He ran a stormer from the front that day. I think there's still a big handicap in him. The only worry is he's not really finishing out his races. Uh, and I just wonder whether the return to Punchestown might see into better effect. 20 to 1 for a bit of nice ground. Hopefully Capucha Mix can run well and run into the frame. The 450, the Latouche Cup, going to play two again in this. Uh, I've got two in a fair few of these races. I think I've got 12 selections overall for the day. I'm going to play another resident of the of the Blair White Hall of Fame, Alpha Days Oboe. And I know it's maybe a, it's a little bit of a risk. It is a risk. He's ran in the cross country, then he ran in the national and completed in the national. Uh, so he's had a tough enough season, but he seems to be appreciating this this running over the banks and running over odd fences and he seems to like a bit of better ground as well and a best price three to one i'll take him over some neck some neck ran a very good race and was ahead of him at, at cheltenham but i was just a little bit concerned by some necks jumping i think alpha days oboe has seemingly taken to the fences a little bit better and one for the old stage or the tour guide of these uh cross country events bally boker bridge at eight to one i think the majority of bookies are paying out four places i'd like to hope the peter Mars horse can roll back the years as a 14 year old and go quite close at 8 to 1 he won this race when it was last run in 2019 the 525 the big three mile hurdle Ronald Pump will be where I'll be starting in this race at 13 to 2 each way. He is an each way bet. There's no getting away from that. And he's a perennial heartbreaker for the majority of us that do enjoy backing Ronald Pump. Mrs. Um, sorry, what am I trying to say? Flooring Porter is the favourite. I couldn't put you off, Flooring Porter. Look, if you like Flooring Porter, um, I couldn't put you off. Him. I just, I haven't been with them all year. And I'm dubious about just going in at 15 to 8. 
um, at, at, at an end of year event really and he also has shown tendencies to lug left under pressure so I'm going to leave him be I know Vanillier ran a, an odd race actually in the three mile novice circle he looked to be travelling then he was not travelling and then ran on again and so I'm not so sure about Florian Porter Cider Burley never a horse that interested me really so Ronald Pump at 13 to 2 and it would be remiss of me not to have a few pounds each way on Mrs Milner at 25 to 1 look she's a mare that has a fair bit to find on the figures a mark of 139 would indicate that but she ran away with the pertemps and we've seen in years gone by horses can win the pertemps and go on to be very good grade one winning animals or grade one running animals at least they're more than entitled to dip their toe in the sand here as they are the connections of heaven help us so i couldn't put off people having a, a few quid on her each way as well but that being said i'll be leaving it with ronald pump and mrs milner and hopefully one of those two can run big i think a lot of bookies are actually going five places which seems generous to six o'clock, uh, I'm going to go for Max Flamingo at 10 to 1 each way. Here, this is a horse that won at Fairy House for me, Max Flamingo, and I'm really, really hoping that he can run another big race for Francis Casey. A small string of horses, Francis Casey, but he does well with what he has these days. Uh, obviously, um, son of the late Peter and Dennis O'Regan does take the right who gave this horse a smasher when he did win at Fairy House 10 to 1 I think is a little bit overpriced I think there's a few of these horses that are a little bit uh, not over bet but I, I just I just believe that you know there's still possibilities for him and I think he's an improving horse and at 10 to 1 I am going to give him uh, the benefit of the doubt that he can go and improve that little bit more and the one I'm going to play at a flyer and this is another bit of a notions one but a horse called A Great View for Dennis Cullen Luke Dempsey takes the right he's 40 to 1 he's well down the pecking order but he's returning to a course and distance he loves he won this race a few years ago off two pounds higher he's been dreadful recently and you must wonder whether maybe nothing's left in the tank but he hasn't run on a bit of nicer ground for a while now i know it's riding maybe a little dead but overall it is decent enough ground and maybe a return to that could see this horse to good effect at 40 to 1 i'm going to play him each way then we've got the 635 the racing post novices chase or the sorry the ryanair novices chase a uh, grade one event i'm going to be playing captain guinness without the favorite here very small bet just a little one pointer an ergamine i think will win I think Captain Guinness is more of a two-miler than Janadil is. Janadil was very impressive in the two-and-a-half-mile novice chase at Fairy House. But at the same time, he's had a few little jumping frailties, as has Captain Guinness throughout the year. But Janadil has been being campaigned over two-and-a-half miles, drops to two miles. I think Captain Guinness is well worth a shot here at um, in, in the without market. I know I backed him each way in the Arkle, and he did end up just about scraping into a place at a big price. So he's just about funding my addiction for him, and I do uh, I do stress it is becoming a bit of an addiction. The 7.05, the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. I'm going to be going for Willie Mullins and Paul Townend in this with Galois. I thought she ran a stormer behind Sky Ace at Fairy House over two and a half miles. Maybe stamina just ebbing away at the finish when travelling best into that race. She was poor enough in the Mayor's Novices Hurdle, but before that brought good form to the table, I think she could reverse form with Magic Days in this, who is a little bit keen and a little bit fresh at times. I think Galwa perhaps is the one to be siding with. And the 7.35, the bumper. I know Mullins and Mullins have dice our dynamo at the top of the betting, but I'm going to take another chance on a horse I, I had a few quid each way on in the champion bump. He didn't run up to it, up to anything really. But Cool Jet, I think there's still a little bit of a possibility that the horse is better than a 12 to 1 price would suggest. Jody Townend has already won a bumper this year, or sorry, this um, week for Willie Mullen. So it's not unfeasible that uh, Townend could win a, a bumper here for Mullins on a second or third string. Cool Jet did it nicely at the time before Cheltenham and was fourth when, when well fancied actually on a Leopardstown bumper. He's a horse I think they think a fair bit of and he hasn't maybe delivered on that yet but a 12 to 1 I'm willing to take him each way rather than ploughing in to some of those at the top of the market anyway I hope you guys did enjoy this video and if you did please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below and of course let me know hopefully a couple of you had a few quid each way on Foxy Jacks hopefully that has saved a few of the blushes that have been this week so far hasn't been great hopefully you guys have had good punting days if you have do let me know in the comments down below and of course let me know your selections for tomorrow for the big races and the races in general who is your nap of the day and hopefully i'll see you here tomorrow evening for the day four preview between then and now stay safe stay well land a few bets and i'll see you guys then